that has many numbers in football and they mean many different things. Number one, you're in goal. Number eight, you're in central midfield. Number three, you're a left back and parents didn't love you. Or even the number that Jack Grealish calls when he's a little bit tired on a night out. But one traditional number in football is in serious danger of being wiped off the face of the earth. One number is close to extinction. Hey, yo, why is there a huge number 10 over there, bro? Steven, we have got bigger things to worry about right now. The number 10 is a position synonymous with some of the silkiest, the most skillful footballers of all time. Playmaking creators who may not run the furthest, who may not work the hardest, but who's in individual skill can unlock a defense at any given time. So given the importance of creating goals in a sport where it's important to score goals, why exactly is the number 10 a dying breed? Now you might have heard that intro and thought to yourself, but Niren, they're still attacking midfielders who play in the number 10 hole, if you like. I'm not talking about the actual position itself. Many teams across the globe have adopted playing a 4-2-3-1 and they have an attacking midfielder and a tricky playmaker that's got good dribbling and a good eye for a pass. There's even some examples in the new generation. You know, think of youngsters like Xavi Simmons, who plays for RB Leipzig and looks like he's going to be one of the next big talents across world football. Jamal Musiala basically already is is he's probably got one of the brightest futures of any footballer on earth right now and he's an elegant skillful insane dribbler and a great playmaker too bruno fernandez in the premier league although might go missing in big games sometimes is still crazily efficient but what do you notice about him in comparison to say a dennis burkham he runs a lot further and works a lot harder as of october bruno fernandez had run the second furthest of any footballer in the premier league what i'm trying to say is Dennis Bergkamp was never topping those sorts of charts back in the day, but did provide some of the maddest and most beautifully crafted moments that the Premier League and the world of football has ever seen. But you don't see players in his style, in his mould anymore. There's like languid, sort of lazy looking players, even though they are working hard, like Kai Havertz's style makes him look a little bit like that, but he still works hard. He's not a luxury player, either in, in terms of style or in terms of ability. Not a luxury guy, he's like a Ford Mondeo. Look around world football. There's no Mesa Urzils. There's only Martin Odegaard, who still run about a lot, play more like a number eight at times. We're still on a search for a new Oscar. To be honest, we're still on a search for the old Oscar as well. Where did he even go? And sure, there are some examples of attacking creative playmakers who don't run about too much. There's a young kid at RB Salzburg right now called Oscar Gluck, who kind of reminds me of that. But other than that, everybody works hard. But why? And when did this even start? Let's take a look at the most obvious example, and that has to be Mesut Ozil, right? Man who rose to prominence in Germany, then got a big move to Real Madrid after impressing as a youngster on the world stage, and developed into one of the most exciting, eye-defying players in football history. That man could thread a fridge through a kitchen sink. It made absolutely no sense. He could find space on the London Underground. A player who could find a pass that no one else could spot on the football pitch. Getting 17 assists in La Liga in back-to-back -back seasons, and claiming in 19 in the 2015-2016 season for Arsenal, which was only one off a Premier League record set by Thierry Henry. But between 2018 and 2020, his game time declines. He can't get into Unai Emery's side after Arsene Wenger leaves through a perception of laziness and then other off-field situations with Arsenal as well. And he was creating a lot less during the games that he was actually playing too. It wasn't just that he was frozen out, he was also just less effective. Going from creating 3.5 to 4 big chances per game or per 90 minutes down towards two under Unai Emery. Now that might have been down to a change in style, but it was also down to less time on the ball. Have you ever wondered why Juan Mata just kind of suddenly fell off a cliff? It was partly because he went to Manchester United, but also because of a change in the game. Chelsea fans will look back at the Spaniard with fond memories after that one season where he grabbed himself 29 assists in 64 games and one player of the year. But as Jose Mourinho arrived back at Stamford Bridge, he'd fall out of favour and then move to Manchester United once replaced by Oscar. And why wasn't Jose Mourinho was keen on him. Well, he wasn't a hard worker. He wasn't going to do his bit out on the pitch. He wasn't quite as keen on doing the dirty work as some other players that Mourinho could have chosen from. Now, let's have a think back. Let's reminisce for a second. It's the 2014 World Cup. Brazil are in the process of ruining an entire generation's beliefs and love for football. And James Rodriguez is bursting onto the scene. The problem for you was you burst off the scene. <laughs> This was the boy at which he actually had career prospects. And in the end, he'd moved to Real 
Real Madrid. Now, in fairness, you know, a lot of things have happened in James Rodriguez's career, but that first season at Real was insane. 13 goals and 13 assists, he slapped, but then after that, he started to fall out of favour, couldn't really nail down a consistent place in the starting 11, and then he'd go out on a two-year loan to Bayern Munich. Two-year loan, by the way. We should have known it was game over from that point. Who goes out on loan for two years? He was signed on both occasions by Carlo Angelotti, who then took him to Everton as well. Carlo really did have a consistent tactic anytime he saw the Colombian slightly out of favour at his current club. I promise you, I'm gonna get you out of this! Life started well for him at Everton after kind of faltering a little bit at both Real and Bayern, but in the end he fell out of favour, didn't really want to be there, found himself depressed watching other Everton footballers from the bench. It's that bad lad, I'm lighting a cig up now, hoping to get kicked out. Before moving to Qatar, Olympiacos, and inevitably out of the game entirely. And there's loads of other examples as well. Even players like Henrik Mkhitaryan were still pretty effective now for Inter. I can't even believe he's still going. It feels like he's been around for about 25 years. He's still effective, but he's been moved into a completely different position. He plays out wide now. So what is the reason, ladies and gentlemen? Well, I can't lie. It's all Jurgen Klopp's fault. I mean, it's not just him, but Gagan pressing and just high-intensity football have meant that A, these sorts of players just don't get the time on the ball that they would want anymore. Go back and watch a game from 20 years ago. You'll see a centre mid get the ball, look up, complete a crossword, and then have time to ping a ball over the top. You don't get that sort of time on the ball anymore. As soon as you receive it, pause. You've got maybe three seconds to turn, evaluate your option, and then play the ball combined. And that's a double whammy, because obviously those number 10s are not only getting pressed more, but in order not to get completely over and and dominated, teams are then expecting their own players to press more as well. And if you're Mesut Ozil, you're not pressing, bro. These guys that I was mentioning, it's not that they are lazy footballers, but their game isn't to just be constantly hustling and bustling and running around in order to make things happen. Their game is to just receive the ball and every now and again at key points during the match create a moment of brilliance and a moment of magic that will swing the game. Do you think Mesut Ozil's listening to Unai Emery when he asks him to track back? No, the man's distracted on the halfway line with the rest of the Arsenal midfield. Speaking of which, imagine being a poor centre mid partner expected to sweep up for Mesut because he won't do his job properly. I'm done. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Gary, how was that? James Rodriguez sat on the bench contemplating his life in Qatar because he failed a bleep test in training. The world of football has changed so much now. It's not just about having the skill and ability like it was 20 years ago. I think that's why people look back at that era and love it so much because it felt like it was about the beauty of the game rather than the efficiency of the game. Back in the day, you were seeing the likes of Ronaldinho and JJ Okocha, Thierry Henry, all these magicians pulling out incredible skill. And the number 10 role is the one that's been impacted the most because that's where all the magic was being created. Cesc Fabregas said it himself and said that number 10s just kind of are going to fade into obscurity because he's noticed that managers are expecting so much more out of their players in terms of working hard. Arsene Wenger said the exact same thing when he left Arsenal too. So the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, that the number 10 role is never going to be the same. You're probably not going to see a Dennis Bergkamp regen appear. I'm not going to lie. Unless football changes again over sort of the next 10 years, the next couple of decades, to allow for a little bit more space to, for things to slow down. There's a couple of those old school number 10s about so in the younger generation, but for the most part, the ones that are going to work out, the ones that are going to go to the very top are the ones that have the work ethic as well. What do you make of it? Is this a good thing for football or is it a bad thing? We all love beauty within the beautiful game, but nowadays there's no room for passengers, unfortunately, in the 90 minutes. Everybody has got to do their job, but has it made football better? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to slap a like on it and of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. <laughs>